Okay, guys, Tea with Publicity is presented by my favorite tequila heart seltzer, Mamitas. I'm so happy to be saying that again. I know you guys have been drinking Mamitas since the summer when I started promoting them then. I have not stopped drinking Mamitas, and I am so happy because they're going to be with us all year, and um, I'm just so happy. Like I want them to sponsor um, live shows. I want Mamitas. I want after parties with us all drinking it. Like I just have big things in mind. So if you haven't heard of Mamitas, it is basically a hard seltzer that's tequila based, um, which I'm an avid tequila drinker. I only drink tequila. So for me, it is just like so premium. It comes in four flavors, mango, pineapple, paloma, and lime. What I like is that it doesn't taste like artificial or anything. It really just tastes like you're drinking a tequila soda with a splash of each of those flavors. Um, My dad is like also obsessed. He stocks the boat up in the summer. And you can get them in a variety pack and find it at drinkmamitas.com or order it on GoPuff, which by the way, I've actually started using GoPuff in the city and um, I'm amazed they could like deliver your groceries so quick. So you could just get Mamitas if you're having a pregame or whatever. But I am so excited. Um, Cheers to Mamitas and here is today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast. It is another glorious week. I can't believe I'm like 50 something episodes into this thing. Um, January is finally almost over. I feel like January was just a shitty month. I don't know. Gia, do you feel like January was shitty? Yes. I think it's because of the weather. I think it's the weather, but I think for me at least it's the expectation that January holds. Yes, I agree. Like I, okay, let me backpedal. I shouldn't say it was shitty because there was a lot of good that happened already at the start of the year in terms of like business and stuff for me. But in terms of like personal, I feel like I kind of hit the like ground running in January and was like, I need to do this. I need to vision board. I need to crush all these goals. I need to be a better person, work out, date, blah, blah, blah. blah. Like I was so like a horse, what's it called? Like a bull out of the cage? I yeah, don't know. yeah. <laughs> I was so like shot out of a gun. And now I'm like, okay relax yeah. like ease into the year for some reason i feel like this new year's like so many people set like very high like goals and expectations for themselves which is a good do thing do you think it's because we're coming i yes. mean we're still in the pandemic it's like post, but- yes totally mm-hmm. so people are like i need to really like get my shit together now and i feel like it put a lot of pressure on people it put so much pressure on me like yeah. the first few weeks i was so overwhelmed and now i feel like i've kind of just been in the weird like slump a little bit because the weather's been cold and i'm just like i need to get back to pedal on the metal just like back to normalcy but also now slowly incorporating some of those things i want to do versus like putting all this pressure on myself to be a different person overnight so today's episode we will catch up with me a little bit then i have Greg Grippo from The Bachelor on. Um, Super nice guy. I've gotten to know him a little bit throughout the last few months. He was at my live show and we've hung out a few times since. And um, yeah, just like a normal Jersey guy, nice guy. Um, I do ask him some of the harder hitting questions. We talk about his mental health, um, how he was portrayed on the show, if he plans to go to paradise, all of that. So we will get into that interview in a little bit. Then I will do the Ask Alyssa segment where I answer your advice questions. And then we will spill the tea. Um, I have some shows that I want to talk about. There's also some like weird celebrity stuff going on, like all this Julia Fox and Kanye stuff. And we need to talk about that. But before that, um, just talking about vibes being off. So I was feeling like super spiritual in the beginning of January. And I kept seeing like 1111, 555, 222, whatever. I just kept seeing angel numbers. And if you guys are OG Tea with Publicity listeners, you remember Laura Day. She was an intuitive that I had on. And um, she calls herself an intuitive, which... I think we would commonly know that as like a psychic, but she doesn't really go by that because she just like doesn't like that stereotype. And she's like an older woman. She's so cool. She's the most interesting person I've ever met. So anyway, she was on the podcast and then she invited me over to her house and I went because I was just like, oh my God, like when do you get an invitation like this? So I went and we kept in touch 
And I had been thinking about her so much lately because I was like, I really don't want to lose touch with her. Like, I wonder what she's doing. I wonder if it's weird if I reach out. And last week, she texted me and was like, I guess she knows of that course. I'm thinking yes. about it. And she was like, it's just so crazy. Yeah. And she was just like, how are you? Like, she sent me an article that she was in because she knows I used to be a publicist. And she was like, look at this article that I was in. Like, how are you? Like, I really wanted to keep in touch, but things got busy. Like, do you want to come over soon? She like hosts these. Guys, she's so cool. She hosts these parties in her Tribeca Ugh. loft. She had like one of those full table charcuterie boards. Oh, that's awesome. And she like is a connector of people. Like she'll bring together all these successful people and just like have us connect. And I was with like doctors and like it's so cool. And anyway, so she was like, I I like loved you. I want we need to keep in touch, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Laura, I've been thinking about you. But I feel like it's no chance that like that stuff happens when you're like seeking it out kind of and like I just feel like I need Jesus (laughs) so he brought me Laura Day that's hilarious it was crazy though because I was reading in this article she doesn't do readings of like friends okay I think you have to like set a boundary right makes sense and she's actually like a business consultant so companies hire her to like one of the examples in the article was that um a company hired her and they were launching a huge like new product and she was like the packaging isn't it's gonna break when you ship it Hmm. and they were like what do you mean like we're getting ready to ship it tomorrow she's like well I hate to tell you but like this entire thing the operation it's not gonna work if you ship it so then they did a test to see they shipped some of it to see and it all broke like it's wild so she gets paid to like use her intuition to tell companies like no that movie premiere that shouldn't be a winter release that should be a summer release interesting and that's like what she how she makes her money and like the article was saying that she hasn't had new clients in like 20 years or something and she charges fifteen thousand dollars for the hour (laughs) that's how powerful she is and she's just texting me (laughs) i'm like hey that's insanity (laughs) that's the best job ever i feel so like lucky to like have like know someone like this yeah because she's truly i was trying to explain it to my sister like i could just go on and on but i'm like she's someone in a movie like she's like a character the fact that someone like this is like walking this earth it's so wild to me like i just feel blessed to have met her yeah that's insane like i would kill to be able to like i have no intuition at all i have really good intuition yeah i just i don't expect anything (laughs) i but she so she teaches courses like how people could tap into it like apparently right. it's a skill we're all we all have. Interesting. But I'm um, I, I need to go re- to that class. Yeah, I have a really good intuition. Like I'm usually right about people, the vibes I get. Yeah, like, that's but, true. I'm a good reader of people for sure. Yeah, I usually know when like things are gonna happen or if I don't know. It's it's interesting, but yeah, I definitely do want to talk more about spirituality and get um, someone else on the podcast. I was actually DMing back and forth with. Um, someone that reads like auras so Mm. maybe i'll bring her on that would be cool yeah like i'm just i don't know new year we need to like dig into these topics again yeah like a little deeper so yeah that's what i've been up to not much just you know watching one tree hill in my bed and and thinking about psychics but i also some of my tiktok friends were in town this week which was nice we went out to dinner other than that i had like a pretty low-key weekend i feel like like i said i've been like a little I don't know if I'm, like, in a funk. I just feel a little weird. I get that. I don't love it. Yeah. It's it's the winter months, for sure. Like Maybe that's what it is. No one wants to go out. Like, I've noticed when I go out on the weekends, bars are just not, like, packed the way that they used to be. Well, I'm getting depressed because I'll go to a bar and then everyone's... I, I don't... Okay. How do I rephrase this? I don't care that I'm 31. Like, I don't. Like, I don't have, like, I'm not one of those people that's, like, I'm so old. Like, I don't think I'm so old. Like, I really don't. I'm, like, no, I'm, like, young and cool. But I have a problem with when I go out to a bar and everyone else is 24 because then I feel like, how am I ever going to meet someone? It's more, like, this hopeless feeling of, like, do I need to move cities to meet someone? That's what starts making me, like, spiral. I get that. I mean, I feel like dating in new york is like probably one of the hardest things that you can do especially like as you get older i even notice that when i go out it's like the bars that i go to it's either really young kids like well like my age like Mm -hmm. 19 20 21 or 
it's like really old, like 40, 50. Yeah, like, I, I it's mean, never, I, there's no, where, like, where's the 20? I don't get like it. Where are the 30 people? year olds? Like, yeah, yeah. Where's like the, where's like the 28 to 38? Exactly. Exactly. I feel like there's, they should make a place that has an age limit. Yes. There's like, places in New Jersey, in Morristown, where like you can't go unless you're over 23. I gotta go. Yeah. No, but see, even 23 is too young for me. That, yeah. Like, well, no, because I don't want to. I want someone that's also on the same page that like wants to get married soon, right? And pop out babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just like that's like the one thing I think that's like blah. I don't know. Like, I'm just feeling weird this month. If I'm being completely that. honest, it's hard to get out. Of, it's like I feel like again, not to repeat myself, but the weather really just puts people in a slump. That's mm-hmm. like you wake up, it's cold, it's dark. I haven't You're even like, been dressing I don't up. Do anything, yeah. And you know me, like I, know, I come yeah. dress up. I usually, w- yeah, it's and I feel like I usually like take a lot of thought into what I wear for the day, uh-huh. and I just find myself putting on the same stuff same. every day because I'm just like I'm too lazy, I'm too tired. I've been going into work like a little I, later than usual. You're just, right. It's the Jan. I yes. think it's the month. I it's think the it's winter. The, it's the winter funk for sure. In February, like it's kind. It, that's my birthday month, and I still ha- I hate. Mine's it. January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's like, it's like that's the one thing I can look forward to. But at the same time, no one like wants to go out or do anything Never. when it's. 10 degrees out and you can't you haven't seen the sun in three weeks but then i start thinking like okay summer's coming but if i'm this lazy all winter i'm gonna feel miserable in the summer if i'm just laying here like a freaking mom (laughs) like i gotta get up and do something i don't know i've just been putting so much pressure on myself i'm feeling so like out of touch with my intuitiveness like i like to be like what i work i feel like you need like a spa you're so right like, like you need like a like a like a trip somewhere you know to what just it like is release i need to also just make the i need to tap into my intuition because like intuitiveness because what i work a lot with my therapist about is like intuitively making decisions right so it's like am i laying down because i want to lay down or because i'm just like feeling sorry for myself and it's cold it's like listening to what you actually want to do right. do I actually want to be watching tv right now or would it make me feel really good to clean up my apartment right and like feel like my space is clean yeah so it's like just like listening to yourself and making those choices and I feel like I've been really out of touch with like that part of my brain whereas like I'm just kind of going through the motions of things yeah I totally if that makes get that. sense totally so I don't know I will Honestly, I feel like even just having this conversation now, I like am tapped back in. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like ready. Yeah. Well, that's good. Like as I mean, and you consciously know it. Like it's not yes. like you're like in denial of it or anything. Mm-mm. So as long as you know, I mean, in the back of your head, as long as you know, like you'll make those efforts eventually. Like it yeah. doesn't have to be right now. But it's true. Yeah. I think I just put so much pressure on myself. I, you do. It's a lot to be in my brain. (laughs) I'm just such a Capricorn. I put so much. I I like felt a little relief earlier this week um, because my sponsor came back for the show. Yeah. If you guys heard at the beginning of the episode, um, Mamitas is back to sponsoring my show. And that was like kind of a weight off my back because I, you know, was like, I love that brand. And it's a brand that I'm so loyal to. So like just things I'm like, okay, things are working. Things are moving. And I have to like let myself go through the process and not just like expect everything to happen with the snap of my fingers totally totally one other thing that i'll bitch about while i'm just moaning (laughs) um it was also like kind of frustrating because yesterday you guys know i do sunday scandies and if you follow me on instagram if you guys are new here and you're just here for the greg interview you're really missing out if you don't follow me on instagram (laughs) because i do this thing called sunday scandies where people submit scandalous stories and it's completely anonymous and it's just out of control and absolutely wild and i was kind of feeling down yesterday because a lot of bigger influencers have been copying my idea Mm. and like rebranding it with their own like name so like you know, instead of like Sunday Scandies, they're like Sunday Secrets, Sunday, oh. uh, Tuesday uh, Trivia. What I'm making that up. But like, you know what? I don't know. I'm making all these up. That's not what anyone's actually named it. But people have been taking the idea. And I'm just like, it's such a bummer because you feel like you work so hard and you have this idea and it's taking off and you feel so good. And then for people to come in and take it. and Yeah, that's frustrating. It's it's really frustrating. And like my friend Kate, who's big on TikTok, she kind of put things in perspective for me. And she was like, you like keep doing you. Like you're being consistent. That's all you could do. Like you can't worry about anyone else. And I know that. 
And I do feel that way. But when it's happening, I think when my followers start pointing it out to me is what upsets me because I'm like, oh, the public's noticing. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, like, it's just little things. It's little things. But I'm hoping by the time we record next week, I don't think it's January anymore. What what day will it be? <laughs> I got to check yeah. now. No, next oh, it week be, it'll be still be January. It will be the 31st. 31st. Yeah. Okay, so I'm giving myself a week. We will check in next week. And we'll be bringing better vibes into, yeah. into February. Yeah, agreed. I feel like January is just, like, the trial run of the yeah. year. February, I have good, I have high hopes for February. Do you know now I'm spiraling in my head thinking, oh my God, we're already a month down into the (laughs) No, I don't even like, the way that life is moving so fast, it just truly makes no sense. No, I'm literally flipping out. Um, Okay, guys, thanks for listening to my spiral. We will get into the interview with Greg now, then tune back in for Ask Alyssa and Spill the Tea. Okay, guys, I am here with Greg Grippo. Welcome to Tea with Publicity. Thanks for having me, Alyssa. Um, You were at my live show. I was. That was an experience. It (laughs) really was, I feel. I feel like the guys had a bigger takeaway than the girls because we're used to chatting like this. Mm-hmm. But for guys to kind of have like an inside look at girl chat like that, you guys were all blown away. Yeah, I, I also it was just there were some wild fucking stories <laughs> that were being told. I was just completely caught off guard. I'm like, I don't know when I I have like a pretty like squeaky clean image, and then all of a sudden I became this like savage person on social media, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where this came from, but I love it. You're a fun follow. I'm like I, I claim this <laughs> you energy. You entertain the shit out of me, so <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh oh, it's like not great, but um. So you obviously people know you from The Bachelorette, right? And you are you moving in with Andrew? Oh no. Um, or are you guys not saying yet? I saw he was like teasing it a little bit. You know, yeah, he is teasing it. <laughs> um, you know, my sister like called me last night saying like, "Where are you moving to?" And I'm like, "Shit." Um, but no, we're actually going to be in LA for a month, um, oh. and it's going to be uh, a little trial run. I, I wasn't think, sure because he said something about like in a city near you, and I was like, "Hmm, that's not necessarily New York." Like, yeah. where are they going? Yeah, it's going to be like two to three weeks, but yeah, we're going to see how it goes. Have we- you ever lived in LA? No, I haven't heard the best of things. I'm curious what you'll think because you're from New Jersey, right? Like me. So I like LA because it's like, it's fun. It's great weather, whatever. But I would say it's like easier city to feel like lonely in, Mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's why if there's anybody out there that I'd want to experience a new city with, it's Andrew though. He is in just so fun to be around he like cracks me up like all the time so going with a friend i think would help like Mm -hmm. i feel like if i went at this point as like a single person by myself i'd be like you can't just like walk around you know new york you walk outside that's what i'm hearing i'm like why doesn't anybody walk anywhere everyone has a car i walk so when i went to la a few months like a month or two ago i just would like walk to get coffee walk and i'm like i'm the only person on the street yeah i don't like that no that's what i don't love i don't like that but if you have a friend i think it's different because it's like okay well at least we're walking together Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) instead of walking alone (laughs) yeah we're good at going with the flow so yeah and i always just love putting myself in like weird new experiences so Mm -hmm. i think it's gonna be a good good experience for me so are you yeah like are you a risk taker or no i think i am i went on the show i like yeah i know i like to think i am um yeah i like to take risks i i just I'm not married. I don't have kids. And I'm just like, you know what? Why Mm -hmm. not go to L.A. for a month? No, I agree. I totally agree, especially to try it out. I think that's the best way to try out a city. Like you might go and be like, wow, I really see myself here or go and be like, "Mm, New York is kind of better. Yeah. Wherever is better. You You never know. Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't think I would ever see myself moving out west just because like my family is out here in the East Mm -hmm. Coast. So, yeah, it would. I, I would like to live out in Boston even. I, I love Boston, but definitely somewhere in the East Coast. I see myself long term. So. In terms of risk, when you went on the show, were you like, did you have any reservations or were you just like, whatever, it's an opportunity. I'm just going to see how it goes. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you could plan out what's going to happen yeah. on the show. Mm-mm. You know, there's just so much that's unknown. So I was just kind of like, screw it. If she doesn't like me, I mean, that's, that's it. What are we <laughs> I'll, do? I'll go home. Yeah. But I think the fear <laughs> is like, at least i would have it's like you don't want to be the person to go home first that's my biggest fear it's like you don't want to do all of this for 
nothing. Especially, yeah, especially because like they leak it early yeah, about who's going to be on, and you're just like, shit. <laughs> I would be more like that would be my one thing that because I don't know, maybe I have a big ego or something, but I would be really. It's definitely an ego kill. It's, it's one, definitely an ego kill. Hundred percent. It's definitely an ego kill. <laughs> I would be so sad, but yeah, I think like taking a risk to go on a show like that is huge. Um, you guys like we're kind of in this era of. Like, the show is changing so much. I actually haven't been watching Clayton's season, yeah. which, like, I need to. I need to catch up because I feel like it's my job to, mm-hmm. like, interview people like that you guys. That is your job, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I need to watch the show, but I'm, like, a little Bachelor fatigued. Like, it was just, like, a lot at once. Like, it was, like, season after season. And we almost, like, as I feel like viewers, like, need a break a little bit. Ha- was it, like, really... <sighs> tough for you to go from filming the show it's so highly publicized especially like your role on the show is highly publicized then all of a sudden you're like let out into the world and you just have like all these eyeballs on you and all these opinions and social media like what is that like for you uh yeah it was it was a roller coaster yeah um yeah I mean immediately especially like getting out um the first impression rose it's uh I have a I live in a small beach town and spring lake Mm -hmm. so like the word got out fast um and everyone started like recognize me so it was definitely it was an interesting transition for sure um yeah I, and i also remember like i went to a bar with like my buddies um in boston we had reservations out uh for dinner and then like we had like 45 minutes to like spare so we was like all right let's just get a beer across the street and went to like this place called little pop-up bar cisco breweries i love that place and we had like a couple bars and like it was just leaked everywhere that like oh he's definitely single mm. this and that and like he's out on the town it, exactly and <laughs> I, I i'm just like no i'm just enjoying myself and that's when that was my first glimpse of like okay it's starting to like i'm starting to understand it's like i think i need to stay inside for a little bit lay it's <laughs> like, like oh i can't leave my house <laughs> I, that's honestly how it felt uh-huh. that's um, like kind of it's sad fourth of july like just like wore a hat i i didn't want it to be like perceived in any way i didn't want to you know well it's annoying because then okay I'll be blunt as someone that, like, is around you guys when you go to bars. Girls come up to them and talk to them. So then it's like, oh, Greg's seen at the bar talking to a girl. It's like, no, actually, she came up to me, and I'm a nice human, and, like, we're going to have a conversation. That, and you're supposed to be publicly dating the Bachelorette or Bachelor at the time. While it's airing. While it's airing. So, you know, yeah, you could be single, but you can't act like you're single. Yes, that's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't really be yeah like you can't really be on dating apps and the guys that like send dms then get caught oh yeah no you cannot be on a dating app no Uh uh-uh no yeah it's so fascinating and i feel like i feel like people don't talk enough about like the mental health of it all because it's really it's kind of like these people that go like blow up on tiktok and they're like famous within like a few months and they have hundreds of thousands of followers right that's how i kind of think about like the people that come off the show it's like you go from just like living your life to then everything at once brand deals recognition it's like a lot. it's a lot it's a lot and it can consume you um that's why i'm just so grateful for having like the foundation and like the my family my friends yeah. that i had throughout this whole entire journey for me because i really leaned on them a lot because especially with like the negative stuff the first few negative comments i saw about myself oh my god it just like mm. it really just tears you apart um but you hey it gives you thick skin at the end of the day Oh, yeah, now I'm, yeah. like, bulletproof. Now I'm just like, you know, screw it. <laughs> Sam, I'm like, oh, I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> it is true. Like, it's actually kind of sad because like, we shouldn't have to be – we shouldn't have to be immune to people saying negative things to us. Oh, no, I know. It's kind of toxic. <laughs> it is. But, like, you kind of become it in a way. Yeah. I think especially for you because you were – like, there was big accusations thrown out. Like, gaslighter, this manipulator, this, yeah. that. Like, I <clears> felt <throat> – like watching like you were kind of just like going through something and we were just like watching you go through your own growth on TV. Yeah. Was it hard to feel like you're having this like breakthrough moment, like coming to terms with your emotions and your feelings and then like the whole world is judging you for like feeling your feelings? Yeah, it was it was a lot to deal with. It was um, it was pretty brutal, honestly. I, I was going through a hard time. Um, in that bubble you know being in the bubble itself Mm. is just mentally draining um i i would have loved to experience like an actual season where like you go home i feel like that would have like really kind of sent me back to life because you were in like the covid bubble you're saying my family came back but 
even like during i don't think i've ever like said this i feel i felt like a little always weird talking about it but michael a after he got hurt I don't mm. know if you remember, like we played this game called Bash Ball and he mm. couldn't walk at all. Um, oh, yeah. I think I remember him getting hurt. This, and I'm so bad. I watch the shows and then I'm like, oh, it's, in one yeah, year, out yeah, the other. No, he, he, he got hurt and I don't know what it, what, it, what it was for me, but I felt like I had like a lot of trauma come up with um, what I experienced with like my dad and his passing because when I was like watching Michael A., walk every single time whether it was like the way he was standing the way he was like mm. grunting or like the way he was like trying to sit down and then he started like looking like oddly similar to him like it just like was bringing me back mm. so much he he resembled so much of like my father at like a young age and like the way that my dad was like fighting his like last couple months it was exactly the way he, like michael a was walking and sitting oh, wow. it just like fucked with my head oh i don't blame you yeah that, that's like it was like traumatizing it, it was pretty bad and then like he ended up telling me that his wife passed and then like i just I, it's a lot. I was emotional. I think I cried like almost like every other day in well, that bubble. I know, but that's what I think is kind of annoying because we're like, oh, toxic masculinity. Like, oh, we want a tough guy. We wanted this. And then all of a sudden now everyone's like, we want a guy that's open. But then when guys are open, then it's like, that's not cool either. It's like, yeah. it's, it's, you're yeah. in such a tough kind of position because luckily now I think we are all like society and just like people watching shows have come such a far away with like not being judgmental towards people going through struggles but i think as a viewer it was very obvious that like you had healing to do oh my god yeah i had a lot to do and i didn't recognize that obviously at first because it's hard you to never know when it's you're hard to it. look at yourself in the yeah. mirror and be like okay i need mm -hmm. you know more healing done to myself but i mean i have a great therapist i mean i have no shame in like saying that i'm in therapy mm -hmm. i I love it. I think it's I great. I just had it this yeah. morning. <laughs> I think it's great for me. Um, yeah. She, she's been awesome for me and my mental health, and I think I'm doing well. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's Yeah, because I think, at least for me, anytime I've ever gone through something, I didn't know I was going through it in, until I was looking back in hindsight. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. you don't know when it's happening, kind no, of. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. then afterwards, you're like, oh, shit. Like, I was not myself, or I thought I felt different, but I wasn't sure what that was or what was happening. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise to, like, have something happen where you could watch yourself back or just, like have the public kind of like checking you oh yeah i know it's it <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a nightmare at first but it's definitely a blessing in disguise like it it's helped me in the long run sorry my chair was so low this i was wondering i'm like no, why good. am i on the floor these chairs are always messed up <laughs> mm -hmm. i was like am i sitting on the floor mm -hmm. um no yeah i think coming out of that also like you obviously get so many friendships you're friends with andrew yeah um friends with michael a i assume yeah great also my dad's that. name is michael a so whenever i oh no that, way really oh that's hilarious <laughs> i'm just like okay chill dad <laughs> chill dad um, but who else like coming out of the show have you remained close with i keep in touch with a lot of them um the funniest guy who i man i i wish he got the credit he deserves trey is the funniest human being i oh I, really i, I know trey. i'm not he is the funniest human being out there Wait, me like Googling trey. like the world needs to know was he how paradise? funny this guy is yeah yeah he, yes. he's, okay, yeah, he's I the know one with trey. the uncle he's the one with the uncle <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes 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 he, he is he is one of my favorite I human beings i thought so i was like wait the uncle <laughs> i'm going to i'm going to nashville tonight um Fun. for andrew's uh birthday with uh, wait tonight yeah yeah I'm, so i guess you won't be here this weekend <laughs> no no i'm leaving right out i'm oh, going right. i'm going to, i'm going to the airport after this but um no i'm seeing uh trey mike p and andrew i just can't wait because just trey trey and andrew together are just it, you you can't not laugh with those two. Oh my god i gotta hang with them yeah i also feel like mike p got like a weird addict kind of oh he did he did and and the thing is when when we're like when the show was uh, being filmed, <laughs> we're, everyone's looking at each other like, Mike P's the bachelor. Like th mm -hmm. this, this oh, guy. Like, he's the golden this, guy. This guy's got it. Like, like I, I, it was no question to any of us. We were like, this guy's going to be the bachelor. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. I see really that kind of like, like the mm -hmm. Sean Lowe of it all. Like the like virgin bachelor yeah, type yeah. of thing. Every, well, every single time he spoke, like the the house kind of silenced and just like let him do his thing we we're just like you know let's hear because you're like this let, is his moment let's, let's hear what he has to say <laughs> that's so funny it's weird when you yeah it's weird when you're involved in something and like the your reality in something is different than what the reality is 
that the world is seeing. Does oh, that yeah. make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like mm-hmm. you're living one experience, but we're watching another. Yeah. We were just talking about this the other day about how Bachelor has like lost all of its authenticity because like mm-hmm. it's so calculated and edited. That you don't yeah. know like what I, people are really like. So I like Love Island a lot. Have yeah. you seen Love Island? I gotta be honest with you, I really don't watch TV. Oh, like Love I Island. don't at all. <laughs> Chef's kiss, Love Island. So Love Island has fixed cameras. Okay. So it's like Like Big Brother? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it's like really high quality and they kind of just let like the cast members date and there's equal amounts of men and women. That's and cool. like it's so cool. Yeah. And everyone dates and drama just naturally unfolds because like you'll start kind of liking a guy, but then you like his friends. So like Paradise? Kind of, yes. but still less contrived. Less, less it's not edited. Because it comes out every single day. Oh. So like, yes, it's, it's not, 24-hour turnaround. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. So got you. producers aren't like, go over here and have a chat. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's just people doing their thing and the cameras are following them. Yeah. So it's so like authentic because you're, there's no spoilers either because it comes out, like they film that day, it comes out in 24 hours. Oh, that's in, that's cool. It's so, I it's like the that. best show. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. But, okay, so you aren't a big TV guy. Like what, let's like d- dive into like, mm-hmm. who is Greg Grippo? So like, what do you do? Do you read? Do you like, what do you do if you don't watch TV? <laughs> um, <laughs> recently, the past couple of weeks, I've been bad with it. I've been playing Xbox, but I'm not big on like <laughs> Xbox or nothing. But um, if I was a guy, I totally would game all the time. I just, yeah. I like play phone games. I'm a weirdo. I, I know it's it's been bad the past couple of weeks. I've been playing with Andrew and Trey so much, like Call of Duty. All we've been <laughs> the doing. Is, that's, no, seriously. Oh my god, I get into it. Um, no, but uh, I loved. You know, growing up, it was always basketball, mm-hmm. basketball, working out. Um, and that's honestly why I'm so excited to uh, live with Andrew this next month, because like all my best friends live in Boston. Mm. And then like all these guys now that are like great friends of mine live all over the like, you know, the um, states now. And like I don't really have that many people in New York, so mm. I don't really have like a gym buddy. So it's going to be like nice to get back in the groove. Yeah, like to train and, like, with. And to like and have somebody just like push me and like, mm-hmm. you know wake up with you know it's gonna be nice i agree there Mm -hmm. is definitely that like push and pull with a friend that like i live alone now Mm -hmm. and yeah i agree it's like you kind of if you if you're not dating someone and you live alone you're kind of like and we work from home it's kind of like lonely a little bit like it's nice to have someone my friends live in my area so i'll be like hey i'm running errands do you want to like come meet me we'll go to whole foods together like just someone to do something with yeah yeah i'm also a big beach guy um you said you were from jersey so yeah so i have a house in point pleasant okay all right so spring lake yeah and um are you from jersey also yes i am what what part um chatham okay but i grew up in montville Okay. I, yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, it's so funny. So where do you go out like when you're down the shore? So like, I'll go to the. Um, well, I used to. I feel like I don't like go out. As much I haven't. Anymore. I haven't been out in the shore in like in about. Parker House. Parker House. Yeah. I haven't been. I haven't been to Parker in close to three years now. It's going same, on. Like, same, like three years. years. Yeah. Well, I feel like if you went to Parker House, that would just be like. It would. Not I be miss. Good. I miss Parker House so yeah. much. No, but though. I loved it. That basement. I ran shit. I, I. I just. I love live music so much. <laughs> yeah. There's just something about it. I yeah. would just like go to the back bar, back right corner by the bathrooms. The guys like they operate in a circle when they like man the bar, which I love. Like mm-hmm. instead of just like you know when you walk up to a bar and they're like you. Yeah. Like they just go in a circle, so you know you're just like waiting your turn. And they oh, got the shuffleboard in the it. back. I love yeah, it. Yeah, the shuffle. Mm-hmm. That's the bar I would stand mm-hmm. by. Um, yeah, so I, I do that. But, like, I feel – I was actually saying this to my therapist today because I was like, I feel like I've been, like, go, 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 go since my live show with, like, the minor hiccup of having COVID <laughs> in between. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I – because of COVID, like I hadn't gone out in two years, basically. Right. And now I feel like, I mean, COVID's still rampant, but like at this point I've had it. We're all vaccinated. I'm back to like being social and I'm almost like in shock because we spent two years doing nothing in isolation. And now I'm like, this is a lot. I know. I don't remember like the last time I've been to like a house party or no, something or like, same. you know, a gathering like that. I, I'm just like, it, it's been years. Probably that pregame that we <laughs> that's were honestly, That's <laughs> honestly the last like or the biggest, you know, uh, pregame I, I've ever been to. And there's like six people. <laughs> I have to tell you, Greg, I was like, I think I just gave all of Bachelor Nation COVID. I was <laughs> what a- oh after <laughs> your live show after that, i didn't i didn't get it so no, i mean yeah i don't think yeah. i had it at my live show but then later that weekend mm-hmm. like two days later 
I got it wrong. We all, Jesus. like one Everyone by one, po- testing positive. That's rough. Fallen soldiers, yeah. and I was like, "Oh shit!" I hugged Peter. I hugged. Greg. Yeah. I was like, "I just spread this." Oh my everybody. god, that's hilarious. Not hilarious. Oh Jesus. <laughs> no, but I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. It, luckily, like we were all fine, and it was actually fun to have it during the same time as friends. Like talking of games, me, Rod, Erica, we would play like these card games on your phone. Have you ever played Game Pigeon? No. Oh yeah. That's- oh wait. Oh oh, like the uh, um. <laughs> Uh, what, flip, what like flip, the flip cup pong. Got gotcha, you, cup pong. Yeah. Yes, we. So there was this game you could play Uno if you have five people. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is so embarrassing. <laughs> we were all sick, so we just all day long played Uno because like we had nothing to do. We couldn't yeah. leave our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds really fun, though. <laughs> you gotta get just like take your friends by surprise and just like send them a game just of like them, flip yeah. cup or Uno. Yeah, I will. <laughs> just send one to Andrew. See what <laughs> see if he plays back. Um, okay, so what's like next for you? Because I I guess Paradise Films like we're in the middle of winter. They film summer, like what June, July. Yeah, I remember the guys uh, going last year. I think it was uh, beginning of June. They went. So, are you open to going? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to be honest with you. I haven't watched a single episode mm-hmm. of any. As soon as that finale st- uh, aired with mine, I was done. I you were, was, yeah, you I were like, like, I can't. I need a fucking break. I mm-hmm. need to just like, you know, get back mentally. Like what gets me right. Um, no, I uh, I'm I really haven't thought about it. You'll and, see. Yeah. And it's just like not something I'm really considering. Honestly, it's really not. I think. I'm just putting myself like in your position like if I were to go it's kind of crazy to think because although I'm ready to meet someone and you think to get married it's kind of scary to think that you can go somewhere and come back engaged yeah like it's a really quick turnaround time like I'm ready to meet someone but I don't think I'm ready to get engaged in two weeks is paradise shorter than I think it's like four six (laughs) weeks like so that's my point but at the same time I feel like Paradise makes more genuine connections. It does. I, that's what I've heard. Yeah. And also maybe you meet the love of your life and that everything changes. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's kind of scary going into it. Like people go into it being like, oh, I'm just going to have fun. But then like you literally could come out engaged. It's oh, wild. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. yeah that, I, it, there's a lot of success story, stories for sure. I, I, I know a couple of my buddies are all for it. Yeah. Um, that are ready to go. Well, because... It's hard to date in the city or any city, and it's like they're basically hand picking. They're like pre vetting people for you. Yeah. So it just makes it easier, I think. Yeah. Like when else are you around, especially as a girl? Like I walk into a bar and everyone's like five two. Like when else are you like on a beach with like everyone that's above six foot and like <laughs> vetted for you and to be good people? You. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I totally hear you. Yeah, that every everyone has to be tested clean and yeah, everything. It's yeah, it's like the best case scenario. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, some of, like, you know, my good friends came out of there with, you know. Like, relationships. Relationships. Yeah. So, it definitely works for a lot of people. All right. So, maybe we'll see you. Maybe we won't. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop right now, please. <laughs> I just, you know, never say never. But I think, well, actually, speaking of, because I, when I was drunk, I remember telling you, I'm like, you got to play it like Tyler Cameron. I <laughs> just saw, I take it back, everything I said, because he's going to be on Celebrity Big Brother, I saw. Mm. Oh, no way. I don't know if I love that for him. That's an interesting move, <laughs> for sure. Just because, like, I want to see Tyler Cameron, like, Calvin Klein model. Yeah. You know, me and my publicist mind, I'm like, we got to get you on the cover. We have to do this. Like, I have, like, big plans for these people. Well, he's... I mean, it makes sense. I feel like going back on another reality show, like, he kind of needs... If I was a reality star, I would take every opportunity. Yeah. Like, I don't judge anyone. Like, I think, is there anything that you would, like, love to parlay into? Like, I would go into hosting 100%. That's what I would try to, like, parlay my reality yeah, fame into. Yeah, <laughs> like, E or something. Yeah. Is there anything that this has, like, given you an opportunity to do? Like, the whole thing with you being in acting school was, like, a big oh topic my God, that was of conversation. Huge. That was huge. My God. <laughs> yeah, like, she, like, Jesus Christ, he can't want to be an actor and go on a show? Like, well, here's also the thing. Like, I didn't take pictures while I was at the studio. So many people were, like, saying, oh, he cleaned up his page. I'm like, well, I have a picture on there, one. Who and, posts in class? And two, like, nobody, you're not even allowed your phone inside. Yeah. And somebody was like, he took it off his LinkedIn. Like, I don't use LinkedIn if, like, you want me to be totally honest with you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, people were making that the biggest deal. I'm like, 
Who cares? Like, you're allowed to have other aspirations outside of going on the show. That sucked because that ended up being my storyline. So I was just like, yeah, you know what? Well, it kind of sucked because, like, you clearly weren't acting on yeah. the show. Do you know what I'm saying? You like, would be an Oscar winning, <laughs> yeah. literally. Honestly, like. I, I, honestly, I thought it was pretty flattering <laughs> that yeah, people yeah. were like. <laughs> you're like, I am fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so is that completely off the table? What, acting? Yeah, or you still like it? Gosh, I was like, <laughs> you guys scared him out of it. Everyone they scared the shit out of me. Are you kidding me? Because I was like, I was like, God forbid somebody like brings me like a deal I cannot yeah. refuse. Yeah. Like, hey, do you want to like do this acting edit? And I'm like, well, shit, I gotta well, take now this. Now I'm proving every and, yeah. and now I'm proving everyone right. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, I just, I don't know. I mean, if there, if there was like a funny rom com or something, yeah. obviously I would like do it. You could it, be like but, a Netflix guy. But I, I got. The acting, I I was bad. I was really bad. <laughs> if I'm just gonna be blunt, I and I took this like audition class. It is the most terrifying. I give people credit. It's the most terrifying. Thing I took in the world. one class mm-hmm. not to act because I can't act to be a host. Like you like have to go and they just want you to be yourself. So it's kind of different than acting. But even that, I was like, I had a migraine after because I was so stressed. During oh it. my god! No, people were so high strung it's, in that place. You really just, have like, to let go when you're an actor and oh, just like not god. care. The biggest thing you gotta let go. Um, I can't. I'm too in my head. Yeah, it definitely broke down a lot of walls, though. It yeah. made me more vulnerable. I'll, I'll I'll say that. Well, they say to do um, improv mm-hmm. if you want to be an actor to like get yourself. At, but like that's my biggest. I can <clears> never <throat> just. It's weird because like I can go host a show and be myself. I feel like you'd be so good at improv. I don't know. It's so <laughs> weird. I can't like be a goof. I don't know. Maybe I gotta try it. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah. But yeah, so I kind of get that because you're kind of in like a catch-22 where it's like if you then take a sick acting role, then everyone's like, told you that was his intention. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Yeah. That, well, maybe you'd be good at like hosting or something. Nah, I honestly don't think I'd be good at hosting. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm thinking like where you could just be yourself. Yeah, I, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself um, in recent years about like what I want to do and trying to like force certain mm-hmm. things and like certain jobs. Um, with me right now, all I'm focusing on is, you know, just my mental health getting getting back to what makes me happy and i'm i'm really excited for this uh you know a few week trip out to la um Mm. and i'm just gonna see what happens yeah yeah just like be one with when i went to la i was like i'm gonna meditate and hike yeah you'll see me on the beach (laughs) yeah like all of a sudden he becomes like (laughs) this like preacher no i think okay one idea for you Mm -hmm. and then i'll stop throwing out ideas but i would love to see like a men's mental health podcast yeah for sure like i think it's really cool when men break down walls with mental health because i feel like we see like a lot of women talking about it and talking yeah. about therapy and this and that but there still kind of is that stigma a little bit oh absolutely it's not like you know i sit around um you know with like my best friends and like they ask me like how therapy's going mm-hmm. by any chance but like see we do as I, women. I, I, and i and i do feel co- more comfortable with like women like opening up yeah uh, opening up about like my therapy but i i also have no shame in it but it's definitely just like not a point of uh you know, conversation that me and my yeah. guys talk about. See, it's like uh, my friend, I know she has therapy on Tuesdays, so I texted her yesterday. How was last night? Yeah. <laughs> like, we're so... And then, like, even this morning, my sister knows I have it on Thursdays, and she's like, how was your session? Like, girls are... We really do talk about it so much. Yeah. So I definitely think there's something there, whether it be like a podcast or like a hotline or like a group text or something, where like men, especially like former reality stars, could talk about like being in the public eye because oh, it's absolutely. definitely tough oh it's tough for sure yeah well greg you're the best thank you for coming on oh thank you for having me i'm jealous you're going to nashville tonight i'm pretty pumped i don't know what to expect <laughs> i've heard some crazy I, things i want some killer content yeah i got you <laughs> where could everyone follow you and stay up to date uh my name greg grippo uh <laughs> i have a tiktok haven't made one tiktok we'll see if i ever make one it's greg j grippo <laughs> well we'll help you there yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay, guys, time to give some advice. G and I are going to do our best. So here is Ask Alyssa. This person wrote in and said, Hey, girl, I listened to your last pod and how you talked about trying to love yourself and grow through this last year. Advice on how to get back on the wagon. I lost 15 to 20 pounds this year and naturally gained most of it back and now feel like shit. I notice when I look good, I feel good. I'm a better person, etc. But when I feel like shit, I'm a little bitch, super negative, and I get in my own head like, oh, my boyfriend hates me. When in reality, he's just working and left me on bread. Hmm. For context, I'm 23, live at home, in grad school, and working. Not that that has anything to do with it all. Um, 
hurt people hurt people. If you're not happy with yourself, you're taking it out on people. I definitely notice like when I've been most unhappy in life, I'm a bitch to everyone. Mm. Yeah. And also like if you know that you feel better when you're I don't know if it's whether you're working out or self care, mm-hmm. whatever like makes you feel better, whether it's yoga, whatever. Th- then you ha- you have to do it. You know, you have mm-hmm. to. It it takes a lot to kind of like get that motivation. But if you know that's what makes you happy and that's what makes you feel better, then you have to find the motivation to be able to get up and do it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I think it's easier said than done, though. Totally. But I think. I think with the dieting, how you're like, I gained it back. It's because. And this is a whole another thing, but like I discuss food freedom a lot. But if you're dieting and restricting yourself, when you introduce those foods back into your life, you're going to gain the weight back because you'll probably go haywire. Yeah. It's just better to be balanced. And I think just be balanced. Make sure that you're – check yourself because like you could – be the same weight but have a completely different perspective and you just need to like check yourself and be like wait I'm taking this out on the person I love because I'm unhappy totally and you need to just really like know where your moods are coming from yeah and just take accountability for it and try to really just remain like in the know of how you're feeling and how you're dealing with things um while you try to work on yourself and get to a place that you're happy with yourself yeah it takes time, but you just need to, like, make sure you're staying on top of your goals and staying on top of, like, doing things that make you feel better. So as long as you're doing, like, weight fluctuates all the time. So if you know that you're eating stuff or doing things that don't make you feel good, then you need to, like, consciously cut that out of your life and go back to the lifestyle that didn't make mm-hmm. you feel good. That's true. Yeah, it's, like... I feel like we just get in like self-sabotage, you yeah. know, where yeah. you're just like. And people go through funks. Like people or you're go like, through oh, phases. I gained weight, so I'm just going to keep gaining weight. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah, totally. And yeah. It's just, it's just being able to like consciously help, like help yourself, you know, mm-hmm. like the only, at the end of the day, the only person that can help you is yourself. That's so true. And you'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Ask Alyssa. Hey, Alyssa, this may be a long one, but I always appreciate your perspective on things. So I hope to get your opinion. I am in a situation ship that has been going on since June, almost six months now. And it has gotten way out of hand. He got out of a serious relationship about two or three months prior to meeting me. And when we initially matched on Bumble, he was very upfront about that and about looking for something casual. Fast forward to now. We have talked every single day since the day we met, seen each other at least once a week, hold hands, 100 plus day snap streak, occasional sleepovers, <laughs> cuddle after sex, been on weekend trips together, etc. That being said, I noticed in the past two-ish months that despite texting every day and everything being completely normal in person, the sweetness and frequency of texting died down drastically. Example, from texting consistently throughout the day to now a good morning and maybe one other text in the afternoon. Hmm. Hmm. When I brought up his change in behavior, he said he wanted to take a step back because it's been feeling too much like a relationship and he is catching more feelings than he plans on. He's still in the camp of not wanting a relationship, which I understand and respect. I am genuinely fine with him wanting to take the step back and focus on himself because I know how beneficial being single after a long-term relationship can be. But I'm finding myself resenting the fact that he started doing it without a conversation with me. Mm, I still go on dates with other people and see my roster of friends with benefits. So it's not a matter of me having put all my eggs in one basket. However the saying goes I just think it's the decent thing to do to communicate things like this instead of having me over and think and overanalyze every single conversation we have I also have to say that the step back he's taken has made me enjoy our situation much less than before Mm. despite our check-in talks I still compare it to the way it was and overthink things I guess my question is should I just cut the cord break it off before um, it gets too complicated or ride it out and simply enjoy having the consistent hookup until it runs its course. First of all, you seem so level-headed. Yeah. Like, extremely. I know. Um, and it was, like, really well articulated and described. I think I think it's not serving you. Um, I feel like you seem like a really emotionally intelligent person and a very good communicator. So... Maybe it's the type of thing where if you express to him, hey, I would have been fine with you taking a step back, but I had to ask 
in order for you to tell me what, that's what you were doing, I would have really appreciated a conversation. And maybe he'll see your side and then maybe he'll change. Hmm. But maybe he's just not on your level of communication. I don't know him, so it's hard to say. Hmm. Um, I just feel like it's not worth it. Yeah, it just seems like you're so you're putting so much time and effort and space into him. And if he, after six months, doesn't know if he's ready for a relationship, I just don't like yeah. it for you. I, I honestly just don't really see the point. Like, obviously, it's fun to have a hookup, a friends with benefits, stuff like that, when feelings aren't involved. But it seems like maybe for her, a little bit of feelings have been involved. Mm -hmm. And at that point, like, if you know he doesn't want anything and you can feel him kind of breaking it off, like, what's the point of putting yourself through, like, more mm. questions, more pain, more, like, overthinking? It feels like you're giving more to him than he's giving to you. Totally. Totally. So it's, like, if you have, like, all these other guys, like, the, like this roster, um, then hit those guys up and have fun and don't, like, put yourself in a position where you have to, like, hook up with a guy and be like, oh, like why hasn't he texted me mm -hmm. like our communications off blah 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 you know he doesn't want a relationship so that's not what you're gonna get yeah I think it's also just saying to him like this isn't serving me anymore yeah yeah I was cool with the way we were going but the breakdown in communication and the way you've just kind of taken a step back like I respect it and I get it but the shift in our dynamic it's hard it's different if he was going slow the whole time and then it gradually got revved up but to rev up and then go slower is such like a disconnect I think that's a sign like maybe he's like seeing someone else uh -huh. I kind of think so too found an interest in another girl something like that because or like I don't want to be a bitch but like maybe he doesn't like you enough to make you his girlfriend and that's nothing about you no it's, it's about, about like, him a thousand percent well it's also about like just because you're dating someone doesn't that doesn't mean that's your forever person yeah so like he might really like you and think you're really cool, but be like, this isn't the love of my life. Yeah. I saw this, I, I don't remember if it was on TikTok or Twitter or something, but someone was like, no, he doesn't want, he may say he doesn't want a relationship right now, but that means he doesn't want a relationship with you. Yes, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah. If, I think if, if you wanted to, you would. Exactly. If you meet a guy and he really likes you, he like, they're going to want to date you, you know? Like, if, yeah. if a guy likes you enough, he'll want to be serious and put a label on it but if a guy wants to just be a fuck boy the first thing they'll tell you is oh i'm not looking for a relationship right now just I, to yeah. like give you a little bit of hope that maybe eventually they will but trust me nine nine times out of ten that's usually not the case mm -hmm. yeah i'd be careful here yeah um i think your gut is right you're feeling like something's different and it is Okay, that's it for Ask Alyssa today. If you guys want me to answer your questions, make sure to DM me. You could do my main publicity account or the Tea with Publicity page. I try to comb through all my DMs. Um, but yeah, we are in need of some more submissions because I don't like really plug it all that often. So definitely send them in and um, we'll probably get to it. Chances are very likely because I try to get to them all throughout the weeks. And now let's spill the tea. I do have some topics that I want to discuss today. Um, West Elm Caleb. <laughs> I think it's been so blown out of proportion. It's a lot, right? Yeah. I, okay, so I, you guys know I've talked about the TikTok narcissist that I was talking to that had like 10 girlfriends in different countries. And like that's different because he was actually dating these people this West Elm Caleb guy was just he was just messaging multiple people he wasn't even meeting up with a lot of them so I don't know I think there has to be a line between privacy and like sharing people's information so publicly I think it's really uh, like okay again not to bring up another like OG tea with publicity thing but if you guys have been here from the beginning you know the want to cuddle guy so basically, let me just do a little quick refresher. Basically, when I first started the podcast, this guy messaged me on a dating app. I said, like, hey, your profile is really intriguing because hmm. he was traveling the country. Yeah. Living out of Airbnbs. So I opened up with that line. And he wrote back, hi, bae, want to cuddle. So I posted a screenshot on my Tea with Publicity page, not his picture, 
not his name, nothing about him, mm. just hi, babe, want to cuddle? And I was like, it's really tough to eating out here. Mm. That was it. No descriptor. No one had could ever know who I'm talking about. But they did. Because, to my surprise, it was just ironic. Yeah. He was on a cross-country trip using the same line oh, on every God. girl. What he would do, we came to later find out, he would just swipe, 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 message that to every single person. And then the people that wrote back, yes, they wanted to cuddle, he would reply to and then go sleep with them if he was interested. Oh, my God. So I didn't know this, but I posted that and whatever. It wound up blowing up. And I talked about it a little bit on the podcast. But again, I never said his name. Hmm. I never said anything about him and it got back to him Mm -hmm. he messaged me and was like okay this was funny but like you're cramping my style like I'm just trying to fuck girls and now I can't because they know my line that's hilarious I was like you're gross and okay I'll stop talking about it so I stopped talking about it yeah after like five times of talking about it point being I never outed him Mm. like you can't just be out here ousting people's like jobs and your private conversations yeah. and talking about dick pics and it just like felt like the West Elm Caleb thing went too far. I agree. I think it I think this guy is just a classic New York fuckboy. He does most things that any other guy in New York does or just in general, he talks to a lot of girls. Yeah. He like, definitely there were red flags in his behavior. I have to say. Like he probably like there are red flags there that said for it to be like blown up where other I think where the line was crossed is other brands getting involved do you see like other brands were making um like I heard like a furniture brand was like shop with us not West Elm yeah like like, we won't fuck you over yeah it's just like ooh. it just it, it really got blown into this unbelievably epic proportion of like trying like this it's like the like, couch guy thing yeah, totally like we haven't seen something like this since couch guy yeah and i know a few people in my facebook group wanted me to get him on the podcast um i was talking to this guy kareem here and he was like he is off the grid oh i'm sure he changed his phone number he ha- changed his job email like he has nothing you can't track him down i'm i'm gl- i don't want people to think that like oh i'm defending him because like no guy should ever be treating girls like that mm-hmm. and like I'm I'm glad he got called out, but to like dox his workplace and his yeah, name that, and like I agree. it's just like it's just unnecessary. Like deal with it offline. Well, I think sometimes the people that post on TikTok don't even realize yeah, they don't expect it to yeah. become a thing the way that it that it does. But even it's like, me, like I posted a, an opinion on Kanye West and it started blowing up, and then I started getting anxiety because can't you see Kanye just like lashing out at me? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I could just Kanye picture him shows up at the office. Just going, I could just picture him being like, "Fuck that publicity, bitch!" Like, you know what I mean? I was like, "That would be great, like merch." I know, but I started getting like really nervous, and yeah. I was like, "Oh my god, like Kanye's gonna come for me!" And I think even I do that. Like sometimes I post an opinion piece, and then it goes viral, and I'm like, <gasps> "Wait." Not that many people were supposed to see this. Yeah. I wonder if these girls were just like, oh, just this will be funny. And then all of a sudden it's like national news. Well, I saw a TikTok from the girl who like started it. And she was like doing like a TikTok dance and being like, when you're the girl that like ruined West Elm Caleb's life. And it's like. That's too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too much. Like good for her for calling this guy out. Like hopefully he learns his lesson and like he knows that he should not be like manipulating women. But I don't know. He, he's gonna like really struggle for the rest of his life like finding a job and like getting his life back together he's gonna like, change his name yeah he might as well Kay, he like, honestly look should because no one would even Caleb. know he's gonna have to shave the mustache too he has a mustache <laughs> he goes bleach blonde <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it will blow over but it's just yeah. like it's a lot it's a lot and like imagine <laughs> like one of like what like one of my fuckboy guy friends like all of a sudden like NYC Kevin gets called out and it's like what like honestly couch uh, not couch guy um want to cuddle guy it could have gotten like this because I posted a clip talking about it on TikTok and yeah. again I didn't out him but people started commenting like wait he messaged me too he messaged me too and I was like oh shit yeah <laughs> that's why he was like you need to take this down it's cramping my style I was it's like just Ew. insane but at least he was upfront about the fact that he just wanted to have sex yeah um what else is happening in pop culture so I still haven't watched Clayton season I said there might be an update 
I'm sorry. I started it. I watched 10 minutes and I was like, meh. I'm done. Um, I will catch up because I do hear that the end of the season, apparently it's like really like dramatic Wild. and amazing and whatever. So I will watch it eventually. But I haven't watched, I didn't watch the new season of Too Hot to Handle that came out. I just finished it. Was it good or no? It was, yeah. I have a theory. <laughs> I was going to say good, but. It's a Hibley. Hate it, but love yeah. it. I have a theory that all those shows that grew such popularity were because of the pandemic. We were in this bubble. Like, think about it. It was all at the same time. Tiger King. Yeah. Too Hot to Handle. Love is Blind. Yeah. Um, Cheer. The Circle. The Circle. Like, it was all during this, like, yeah. moment. And that's why I think, like, Harry Jowsey and Francesca Fer Ferrago yeah. are so big. Yeah. Because we were all eyes on them. Whereas, like, the new seasons of Too Hot to Handle, like, they're never going to be as famous. Never. As yeah, I definitely agree. The, and the people, like, they just weren't that good of, like, the casting drama. Wise. Yeah, content-wise. Like, it was kind of boring. And mm. it got super repetitive because, of course, do you mind Everyone's if I breaking talk the about rules. it? Yeah. There's one couple that, like, keeps fucking breaking the rules. And you're like, you all right, tell at in the this preview point, even. like, yeah, it's like. like you're going to be broke, Yeah. So. Like, it just takes away. And what I'm curious to, you know, they tell them that they're going to Pleasure Island mm. and that blah, blah, blah. It's like they're going to figure out eventually that there's no such thing as Pleasure Island. People are like who are applying to the show or get emails well, like they're they, going to have to change it. They or filmed something. season two and three yeah. back to back. So like for season four, if p these people are getting email, oh, come to Pleasure Island. No, it's going to be like, called something else. Yeah, they're going to know like it's too hot to handle. I think the show's over. Yeah. I think it's moments past. It's moments past. I'm sure past, it will have another sure. season, but like I'm over it. Yeah. Um, so I still have to watch that. Ozark came out after like I'd been waiting. Ozark was one of those shows that I watched over quarantine with my parents because it was just like one of those things like a mom, a dad, and a daughter could all agree was like good. Although sometimes there was like sex scenes and it was just so awkward and then we would like <laughs> be embarrassed. But for the most part, it was a good family show other than the the anal sex or like no they were doing like doggy style and we were all like couldn't be <laughs> Wait, it was actually really funny because <laughs> in Ozark there's a scene of like the guy slapping this woman's like ass yeah and it, like it was such awkwardness that like my mom was bending down to get something out of the dishwasher and to like break the awkward silence my dad smacked that's hilarious. As a joke, and we all just started bursting out crying because we like <laughs> knew the reference. You just have to like break the yeah. awkwardness. <laughs> but so ours, Ozark is back. I watched the first episode, and like Jonah is the little kid when he starts the show. It's four seasons. When he starts the show, he's like two. Yeah, now he's <laughs> no, like he's like four. Old. Now he's like forty-five. Like. <laughs> Because, like, when you're at that age in puberty, you grow so rapidly that now I'm like, Jonah's a man. Um, so I will watch, I will be watching Ozark. But what I've been really doing is watching One Tree Hill. Hmm. I can't stop. I've never seen it. <gasps> I know. It is. I was talking to Fran about it today. She loves sister. it. She's like, we both agree. We watch it at least once a year, once every two years. Like, it is one of the best shows on television. Um I just I love it so much I didn't even mean to start getting back into it I just like was having one of those nights where I was like I want to see something I've seen before so I'm like I'll just throw on one episode next thing you know you're yeah. two seasons later yeah. I'm like so I'm living in one tree hill my area code is tree hill I just I love it so much <laughs> that's um, how I get with uh, vampire diaries that's how I get to I just get into a mood where I'm like I got to binge watch Vampire Diaries. <laughs> I need to live in Mystic Falls. Yeah, I need to date Damon. Like, please. <laughs> yeah, so I've been doing that. So, like, I'm behind on literally every show that just came out because I'm living in Wondery Hill. Yeah. Um, but I I keep saying I'm going to catch up, but, like, I know I'm going to be watching Wondery Hill. I do want to watch Ozark. It's just, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, i rather watch a drama yeah. than watch, like, violence. Yeah. I want, I, like, love stories. I think that's why I like watching like Vampire Diaries I get that. and I like reading books that have love. Yeah. Maybe I'm a hopeless romantic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last thing I want to discuss is Wordle. Have you heard of this? I've seen it on Twitter, but I don't play. So this new game Wordle has like been blowing up, where you have basically six chances to guess a five-letter word, and. Um, I don't know. It's just like taking the internet by storm. Everyone's talking about it. I'm such a gamer at heart that like you best believe 
the second the clock strikes 1201, I'm playing. And I am absolutely fantastic. The only one I lost was my very first one because I didn't understand how the game worked. But now I am in it. I am a pro. I tweet it every day. I like <laughs> have a practice game that I play. I'm like so good. And I'm curious if you guys are playing it. So let me know. I got. I, I, I can't get addicted to another thing. Fran says she's doing it too. I of asked course her. she is. I, we're very similar. Me she and her. still plays like, Candy Crush. Yeah, I play Tune Blast. <laughs> <laughs> her and I have very similar interests. Yeah, I'm not a big phone game person. <laughs> I love gaming. If yeah. I was a boy, I I think we talked oh, about this. Oh, I in used my to play with Fortnite Greg. all the time. I'm a gamer. I love. But gaming. I don't like phone games. It's just so fun. Yeah, it's so fun. I like. Um, I still have like Subway Surfer on my phone for the airport or oh, the Oh, Subway Surfer is fun. It's a great way to kill time. Oh, I used to love that one with like the little like man running through the tunnels. Um, oh, Temple Run. Temple Run. Yeah, Temple Run was iconic. I used to like get high in college and play. Yeah, literally. That had a, that Temple Run had such a grip on the U.S. It was such insane. a grip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it for today's episode. If you guys are new here, subscribe, rate, review. Also, the show's also on YouTube. So if you guys want to watch, if you want to listen on podcasts, it's literally everywhere. Um, stay tuned. A lot is going to be happening this year. And again, last thing, DM me, ask Alyssa. And then don't forget to join the Facebook group. It is linked in all my bios. Thanks, guys. See you next Tuesday.